The sell-off slamming the street again today as the Nasdaq plunged back into bear market territory. But what exactly is a bear market? Just how long will it last? Guy is over at the Plasma with The More You Know. Guy. Love to said the piano playing. Is, I actually learned how to play that on the piano, oddly enough. Maybe I'll do it on another show. But I think in order to understand a bear market, you need to define a bear market. So I went to that. I think is, her name is Miriam Webster, her dictionary. And I found what a bear market is. It happens to be a noun, as Dan knows, when a stock or commodity sees a decline of 20% or more from a recent high. And you'll say to yourself, self, didn't that just happen? Didn't we just see the S&P trade 2940, trade all the way down to 2350, do the math, back of the envelope, that's 20%. So effectively, we're in a bear market. Technically, yes, but please slide it, Earl. And you know what? Not really, folks. So what does that mean for me? Percentage drop in my world doesn't really matter. You look at individual stocks, you have some stocks that are down 35%, some stocks down 50%, and not small stocks, major stocks from their all-time highs. So you want to define it, that's fine, but for me it's not about the percentage drop. How long does this typically last? Well, we went to my friend Ken's show, and we learned that a typical bear market lasts about 13 months. What's, what lags and what outperforms? Well, guess what? After the 13 months, financials and tech outperform. Next slide, please, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Bear market breakdown. When the S&P fell almost 20% from April 11th to October 11th, guess what happened over the next six months? Well, S&P was up almost 30%, financials outperformed, followed by technology, followed by discretionary. So though we're on the cusp of a bear market, Technically, you have to start looking for things that six months from now are going to outperform. I think Pete would probably agree with financials and tech. Dan might have some issue with it. But the real one that sort of interests me is discretionary. And six months from now, if everything looks rosy and the president has his deal with President Xi, the discretionary names that have been taken out to the woodshed might be looking like a great opportunity in retrospect. Hey, hey Back guy, to you. Oh, did, hi, Dan. Sorry. Sorry. Did your friend Mr. Ken show uh, mention if bear markets are usually associated with recessions? Do they precede them? Is there any data that uh, Mr. Show has? I'm glad. I'm glad you <laughs> asked that. And I ask myself this question almost every night when I go to bed, and I think I know the answer. And I'm going to ask it again. Does a recession cause a bear market, or does a bear market cause a recession? And I happen to think it's the latter. Why? Because in a world where the U.S. economy is 73 percent driven by the consumer, consumer confidence in my world is just an overlay of the S&P 500. So as the market goes down, people feel less wealthy, they're less inclined to spend. So I think a market sell-off causes a recession. And quite frankly, a couple more weeks of this, and I think people are going to say, maybe we shouldn't be buying that soy vente latte at Starbucks with Pete Najarian. It's really rolled Pete, off the Pete tongue. Like, drink I don't know. Pete does.